Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's Brother John, just want to mention some things to you. I'm following up from a couple of days ago when I made a few videos. I had to hold off uh, for yesterday. I ended up doing a little work, a little job and whatnot. And uh, kind of stayed in some prayer about my grand granddaughter uh, right now, she is breathing better and stuff. Uh, I did get a text. Me and my wife got a text from my ex-wife uh, that they might have to if they don't heal some things or clear some things up that's in her chest. Uh, they might She might have to go into a ventilating machine. But from my understanding, today we got some information that her count, breathing count or something like that, I don't know how that goes, that it's better. Uh, but like I said, we it's still there, it's still a process. I just thought I'll, I'll pause a little bit when I came on. I'm still actually reading. My wife just got here from work, and she was listening to the music that we hear have in the background. And of course, I told you all she she loves to sing and stuff. And uh, she just she was just hold, trying to hold herself back, and she went in. So I thought I'd click on because um, it pulls me in at times and. Uh, just for y'all to hear it. So she, she really didn't know that I probably went out, might have did it. I was going to actually just surprise her. She was trying not to interrupt, but I don't look at that as an interruption when someone is trying to uh, just enter into worship. So I'm just let her be. If y'all hear anything in the background, just just uh, not going to say you ignore it, you know, you know, but dealing with that, area, these are just the times where when you've been through a lot of things dealing with life on your workplace and your job or with people, uh, sometimes uh, you got to get that 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 residue. You have to get that residue off of you. You know those things that try to come to bind you. Now you're in a place, a resting place, a, a place, a secret place where you can just pray or you can just uh, now just release those things that you've been carrying through through the day, and you can just enter in that place of worship. You, when you've been around and surrounded by lies that the enemy's been using this this person, uh, it could be teachers like where my the field where my wife work at. Uh, it could be the children that you're around. These lies that when you see certain things, they look just they're just lies. But sometimes we get consumed in a lie, and uh, when you get out, sometimes you uh, get away from a lot of things uh, of of a certain presence that you've been around. Uh, you 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 want to you want to come in the presence of the one who who holds all truth. You want to get in the presence of who holds all truth. That's why he said. My people, you know, dealing with that that are called by my name, if they will humble themselves, you know, turn from those things, those those things that are wicked out there that's been maybe attached to you or maybe that you have grasped hold of, you know. But sometimes we just got to repent. Sometimes we don't even know what we have done or, or what we have absorbed throughout the day. And, you know, you might have to repent because sometimes you listen to the lies of the enemy. And the Lord has said, you know, those that will worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So sometimes, you know, at, at times you can get caught up with you in that stuck place and you might not even realize as a, a, a believer. I'm going to say that as a believer that you might be worshiping the situations and circumstances, which is a lie. Yes, it is a reality, but there's some, someone that who is greater than our reality. And that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So sometimes uh, just let her do what she's doing. And uh, that's others. You know, you're coming off work. You know, you might need to just get in God's presence. You might need to find that secret place. You might need to come and humble yourself. You might need to bow down. Just surrender. Just surrender trying to make it happen in your day. Trying to make it happen the way you thought it was it should happen no matter what came against you that you're still coming in before his presence to receive power and strength you come to let 
him know that he's still king of king, Lord of Lord. Even though it seems like you might be out there slaving all day long and it and it's been like a burden on you and you had to deal with this and you had to deal with that. You had phone calls and, and situations and circumstances. You might have listened to the news this morning and it might have been a heavy burden on you. But I'm telling you, there's one that's here today that can relieve and lift that burden off of you. Maybe you just need to enter into that secret place. That place of worship. My wife just kind of looked at me and I could tell we, 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 like I said, you can read body languages and you can uh, tell and discern and the Holy Spirit will know. And I know my wife will go in real quick and she, she probably would have went in the bedroom and closed the door and listened, but she was standing in the living room. She just looked at me and at that same sense, you know, um, I was going to put on record while I'm standing here, why somebody, somebody religious want me to just go on in and read the word and go ahead and get to whatever. And they don't have a time. And that's the problem sometimes. Sometimes many of us do not take time. Take time and set it apart. Set everything else. Just, just stop for a moment. Just to praise his name. Just to be at a standstill. Just to allow someone else to get whatever they need to get, to, whatever what, if it's deliverance. Maybe something for God is just to touch them. Sometimes we're not even patient enough for God is just to do whatever He needs to do through someone. We are always in a rush. We are always in a rush when you have the opportunity. When you say you don't have so much time to read your word or to get in his presence or to study your word, uh, just just but but sometimes just getting in God's presence remove all things. And sometimes it, the word says in the presence of the Lord. There's joy, the fullness of joy. Sometimes you might have to come in the, the, the what you've been carrying and get in the presence of the Lord so he can do an exchange. They can take that heaviness and give you joy. That that heaven burden that he can uh, uh, exchange it and give it to a place of rejoicing. You know how the word tells you, you know, that those that are heavy laden. You know, sometimes we might have on uh, heavy garments. It's in the book of Isaiah. And then he tells us to take that garment off, that, that 50 heavy garment, and put on the garment of praise. Sometimes God says, just change up what you're doing. Just take it off now. No different. Many of you are going to come from work, uh, from your place of destination where you were at, and you're going to take those clothes off. But if you can do that that much in the natural, maybe you might need to start doing something uh, more on the spiritual, something significant that's more on the spiritual note. Why you're just thinking, oh man, I'm just so tired. Let me take these dirty clothes. No, maybe you need to take the, the residue of this world off of you. And allow God to come and he place a, 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 a garment of praise and a garment of righteousness over you. That he covers you. You allow him to cover you. I'm going to go in for a little bit, then I might come back for another video. That would be my final video, uh, but I'm just going to move quickly. Um, I did tell everyone, if you get a chance to go to Job and read, it's been almost a week now. So, uh, But Job is an awesome, inspirational story. It, it kind of reminds me of everyday life, things we deal with in life when things are going good and then... Before you know it, things just turn. It seems like the tables turn. And do you not know that God has a way to turning the tables? How he, how he can come and turn a situation around. The, the worst of situations. It doesn't, death don't outdo God. Money, cars, and homes don't outdo God. Relationships don't outdo God because if God is not part of the equation, there's always going to be a void there. So when Job was going through whatever he was going through, this empty, this empty 
place. This, he forgot that, that to have space for the Lord. And it's like me and you. Sometimes we forget because we get so distracted. We let the God of this world blind us to the point where all we see is darkness. And sometimes I've been there, done that. Some of these messages I, I'm talking to, sometimes it's to the ones that are, are somewhat mature. Those that are babes in Christ, just want to let you know, just hang on in there. Whatever has got you in captivity, will uh, you'll be free if you just hang on in there. Whatever's got you bound, locked in chains, shackled, with a muzzle over your mouth, there's going to come a time and there's going to come a place where no one can shut you up. When you will jump around and you will be praising the Lord. When you will be bowing down in a, a, a prostate way of setting. Instead of just bowing down to the situation or circumstance. You will not have to be in that fetal position for the wrong God. Because you will be bowing down, finding yourself being bowing down to God of all creation. You'll be finding yourself bowing down to the God that created all creation. Moving on. My wife done came in here and got started. Makes me want to just hold off, but I'm going to move on. Um, but I'm going to move quickly. Go back to Job. What we'll do is we'll start at um, Job chapter... I guess you could say chapter 9. That's where I pretty much ended at. And it was talking about mediators. Where the, Those mediators, like I said before, we, we, we know Jesus is the, the mediator. He, he's the intercessor for all of us, mankind, the main mediator. But God has left those ambassadors here to represent the things of the earth. And Job was one of them in his time. If you want to look in the Old Testament, you know, he was one of them of his time, but yet in the, if you want to say in this new dispensation, those that are of new wine, you have to realize you are very important no matter what religion may say, what type of practices has been taking place. You have to realize that you are very important to the things of the kingdom. You're God's children, a peculiar people. And when you have not figured out your place or your purpose, one thing that is your purpose is to pray. He said men are to pray without ceasing. That don't just mean men, that is women also. That you are to pray without ceasing. Because prayer is nothing but communication. Prayer, when you're speaking, forms life. When you got those that are out there praying to Satan and then darkness is being havoc, how much more should then we need to be speaking and conversating to the one that is, that is of light, light, that has given life, how much more should we be communicating to him? And how much more should we be receiving from him? So when we are sending forth something out, it's just like a two-way conversation. We're sending, like if you're on the phone, we know if we're talking to someone on the phone, we're looking for somebody to respond. But yet while we look for somebody to respond, we know that on the other side, we need to listen. So we have to communicate and we're sending some things out there to the Lord. And then as we're sending certain things out there to the Lord, those words are life and they're forming some stuff. They're being creative. God talk, God spoke and yet he brought forth creation. And even from the creation he formed with his words, he ended up speaking and talking to creation. And creation had no choice but to listen. It talks about when he was walking with Adam in the cool of the day. So you're a mediator. You're, you're important. If you can't find your purpose, uh, just know that there's a lot here on earth as a representative of Christ, as a son and a daughter that you can be doing. You don't have to stay in that stuck place. But I'm going to move on here with Job real quick. We're going to talk about some still of his character. It's all this stuff was who Job was. And he knew who he was, but it's amazing. We know who we are, but sometimes we forget. And I'm just trying to help people who are in stuck place. I told you to go to Elihu. I'm going to go right on over into that area real quick. So I'm, 
uh, bear with me. If you have to get some earplugs to plug your ears so you can hear the words, because I might be going fast, and sometimes it might be like, I got lost. But just replay it over, replay it over again, or just read for yourself. All right, if you got something that's on the internet, you can just read the book of Job, pull that up, and just listen to it over and over and over again. Sometimes we get stuck in a lot of Psalms like David and Proverbs, but I just want you all to know that dealing with life, these people just life had a relationship with God. It's just like you and I. And sometimes we always look for the answer that is in the word and then the religious people has beat us up. Oh, it's just always spirit. But do you not know all their life only became on paper? It just was written in paper. It's no different than you. You don't have to have the same words Paul said, David said. We don't have to repeat what they say because then with that area, the God in you will send forth things out of you through your life experiences, through your relationship with him, through your love for him, through his love and purposes that he has for you, the things that God himself has placed in you. He said, I have placed the kingdom of God within you, that the kingdom of God is within you. So there's a lot of things. The Holy Spirit is within you, the helper. He, he told you, you know, not what hour to say certain things before men faces. The Holy Spirit, he himself would speak these things. So there could be certain things that would press certain things out of you that you never thought that was there. Many people, when we was out in the world, the first thing we called Jesus. Ain't heard a, a gospel of Jesus. There's many people out there uses his name in vain, but they don't know Jesus, period. But yet they said, Jesus, something in them came out of them. It was that life that was spoken there, his name that was in them, that he sealed, whatever he created, he still sealed it. No matter who the devil think he is, as if he owns that property. It's still the name of Jesus that owns that property. And when it's all over with, even for Satan himself, the Lord, the Lord, the King of Kings, the owner of his own property, he's going to do whatever he needs to do with it when that time comes. But Job had all this stuff in him. And when he was in that stuck place, he would say things. He would say things. So, Get out of re religiosity sometimes. Sometimes you do have to go to the word to see. So this word, because as I said before, it is inspirational. But dealing with that, that there are times when you might not be even have a script. When the, 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 the darkness of this world may try to come and produce not even a Bible. You better have certain things in your heart. You better have some things in your heart. Or at that time when that place comes. You're going to see something God, you're going to see God do something that never been seen before. Never has been done before. He's going to reveal himself to you in a way that a preacher could not reveal to you. Only God could do. What your mama, your daddy could not reveal to you. Only God could do it. What you couldn't do in your own strength that you have to eventually turn around and find out only God can do it. That, that, that's written all through this chapter of Job. But don't forget, you have a greater purpose. And if you don't know it, pray. You don't have to be long prayers like some people that you know. Because in time, you'll have a whole lot to say because God will even allow certain things to push you into that place. God uses situations and circumstances to push you into places he can overwhelm you with so much joy you can't hush you'll be saying things just cause you just just that joyful and they're happy and then you can be in a place where you're just down and out and within all that darkness that might be in you there's a word there's a voice that is speaking out of it and then you can become agreement with that voice sometimes people don't it's still by choice sometimes people don't they listen to that darkness but I am speaking to believers, but I'm also telling unbelievers, those that are out there in the world, start seeking after the one who created you. I'm not talking about all these myths, mystic ways and these astrological ways and these palm readers and, and these tarot card readers and different stuff, mediums and all that stuff and witches and warlocks. Don't, don't seek them. Don't seek image something that's in the flesh because flesh is only limited. But I'm talking about the one 
that yet you have not seen because he is a spirit. Don't try to understand him, but understand that yet he is God. You was formed before the foundation of this earth. You was thought of. You was created for his own purpose and his own being. Some of you look say, well, is I supposed to be destroyed? He created me just to destroy me? No, because he has something afterwards. He has something in store for you. In the time in the world we're living in, many people are calling wicked good and good wicked. If wickedness is benefiting you, that's why you go in that direction. You've been deceived. You've been, you've been very much influenced. You've been drinking of the wine of wicked influence. This world, you've been drinking of the wine of this world. How things have been. Your parents was drinking of this world. Your friends, your neighbors, many things around us have been drinking the wine of this world because the God of this world has been pointed out in us and we don't realize we have been vessels being used. So I'm just trying to give us a place to, that your eyes may be open that we've been drinking wine, religion, been handed down wine that the God of this world has perverted and twisted the word and, and brought some type of religious system even the world system that yet yeah, this the way we think things are supposed to go and yet we forget that we're just pilgrims passing by but as pilgrims passing by we have sat down and drunk of the system of this world we have drunk the wine of Babylon there's more to say I'm moving on. But here is Job knowing who his God has supplied him with everything. And he he got a taste of something. And the wrath of Satan was poured into him and he did not even realize it. That he didn't have to receive it, but he drunk of it. There's many different ways that God can show these things dealing with just this chapter, this, this book of Job, this life of Bob, Job. No different he has done with us. Many of us can look behind us. We can look in the rear view mirror and say, man, if I would have just known, if I could just change the hand of time, then my mindset would have been totally different. How I felt about that in my heart would have been totally different. My soul would have been so much in anguish uh, because of this or because of that. But now I see no different when Paul was going on Damascus. Thought he was doing what was right. He was drinking religious wine till he had an encounter. Till he got smite his horse or whatever he was riding. He fell off. He, he got the, the, the true one who has all power to blind you and to open your eyes. He had an encounter with him. Because once he was struck with blindness because of the glory of God. That same glory opened his eyes. That same glory that blinded him opened his eyes. He seen life differently. Differently. I'm going to move on a little bit. But I stopped at chapter 9. And Job just continues, he talks about a lot of things that is going on with him. You know, let's say chapter 9, verse 14, how can I answer him and choose my words to reason with him? For though I were righteous, I could not answer him. I will be mercy of my judge. If I call and he answered me, I would not believe that he was listening to my voice. Why wouldn't Job think that God would listen to his voice when many times he was... Uh, praying and making supplication for his family or uh, before all that came to pass, all the blessings he already had, he's already going for the Lord and God answered him. He he manifested certain things of to Job. He rewarded Job with many things. 
But then all of a sudden when that stuff, something happens to him, he forget how many times we get so many blessings from the Lord. And then we get those blessings. We forget. We forget. Now, if you just, if I jump from here right now to the end, we'll see that through all that dumb stuff that Joe went through. And I'm speaking to y'all because sometimes since we had a pandemic, this so-called pandemic that was created, some, some of you think you're in a stuck place. Because society, the government of this world, certain people who have agendas, certain people in high places who are rich. I'm going to talk about them. Hopefully, if it's not this video, it'll be the next video. Has gave us wine to drink. or uh, They came and gave us a wine of deception. Poured out delusion. And now you're, you're high on it. You're so high on it that you can't see your way out. You're drunk on this, this uh, American wine. This man may wine. You're drunk on this man may wine. Here at the end of this chapter, this book of Job, he's going to, things are going to be restored. He's going to have double the anguish and stuff he was complaining and going through or whatever. Not when time came to pass, when certain things just came to pass. It was different. Sometimes we're still stuck in two years ago now. It's time to move forward. It's time to go on past that. That's why God has placed this word as an inspirational to us. We can look at these things because he did not just quit on Job. He allowed the situation to take place. Don't get stuck. If you all get the chance, look at me and my wife's, uh, we did a video um, probably been, been over a year ago about uh, it's called man's doctrine man's doctrine equals bondage and the word of God brings forth freedom man's doctrine equal bondage and the word of God bring forth freedom just listen to it it's not nothing long but it's sometimes it's even the generation is growing up now even in my generation some people have been stuck in religion so long listen to many intellectual people just hearing them trying to respect them trying to look at them because of the position that they're in and yet um they had us in the stuck place still got many people in the stuck place and forgive them you have to forgive them too because they don't know what they're doing because nobody can give you what they don't have Nobody can give you what they don't have. You're dealing with man, and man has a limitation. They cannot be God. Man has a limitation. And Job forgot that it was God who brought everything into his life. It wasn't nothing that Job did. It was God that woke Job up. It was God that gave Job ideas. Witty ideas, possibly. It was Job yet needed his... That was a, that he created to become a blessing. God blessed Job. Job only became a blessing before what God had done in his life. It wasn't that Job did it on his own. Job did a needful thing. He got up. And he walked with his God. He prayed with his God. When he seemed wicked, wicked, he shunned it. Even if he sinned it in his own household, he offered sacrifices and did what many of us do that every day. And then we wonder why certain things don't go the way we want to because you forget there is a God. You're thinking from what you're doing that you're playing God and you're not. You're not God because God sees all. He knows all. He sees the beginning from the ending. He's already started that story. Look at the stories of Esau and Jacob. I think it's Esau and Jacob twins. Fraternal twins. I did. I think I did a, a video on them. Uh, generational curses. It probably was my second video that I did. Generational curses. Talking about those twin brothers. They came out the same womb. But God had already spoke them. Mom and dad didn't have nothing to do with that. Mother and father had nothing at all to do with that. He had already spoke this thing in their womb. In the mother's womb. That the, the older one was going to serve the younger one. You would think twins, as I said in that video, you would think because most times twins, they stick together with one another. But yet these, there was a problem term 
from one another. And you would think, wonder why will a mother deceive her own children and, 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 and love one versus the other one. She loved both, but why she would deceive one of her children. You'd be like, that's not normal. Look in today's society where things are taking place. It was a written script for this to, for all of it to play out. When I say for all of it to play out, for all of it to play out, God had already wrote it. He brought the, the, the he manifested the bodies to play the part and the souls in those bodies to fulfill it. It was already spoken. It started the way God wanted to do and it ended the way God wanted to end. For he crushes, this is verse 17, chapter 9, verse 17. For he crushes me with the tempest and multiplies my wounds without cause. He will not allow me to catch my breath, but fills me with bitterness. If it is a matter of strength, indeed, he is strong. And if of justice, who would appoint my day in court? Though I will, I were righteous, my own mouth would condemn me. Though I were blameless, I would prove my perverse. He said, I am blameless, yet I do not know myself. God even called him blameless. But now he's acting like he don't know himself. And as you read on a lot of other times, he's talking about, you know, he, he, he pleads his, his case. He knows his case. But in other areas, he's talking foolish. I'm going to skip on. We're going to go through some of you. Like I said, you can read some of it in chapter 10. You know, he's talking about chapter 10, verse 6, that you should seek for my iniquity and search out my sin. And then verse 7, although you know that I am not wicked, he knows certain things, so why is he complaining? You know, sometimes we wonder why things happen to us, why things happen to good people. Well, some things that happen, that's, that's for now. That's only temporary. Sometimes you can get a whole lot of people who see something happen in your life and all of them get stuck. Instead of somebody coming and seeing past that situation, all of them get stuck. Ooh, that was a bad thing to happen. You hear about that, my girl? Oh boy, you hear about that? Mr. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so? Man, but it ain't over till it's over though. But many people get pulled into that. What's going on in the world? People are getting pulled into that. When are we going to look at things differently? When will we look at things out of the eyes of Christ? When we learn his ways and take on to know his thoughts? When will we start looking at it that way? I wrote on the side, he knows who he is. He knows he wasn't a sinner. Job knew he wasn't a sinner, but he was still stuck. He complains uh, in chapter 10, why would you bring me out of my, uh, brought me out of my mother's womb? That's verse 18. He was talking about the Lord in verse 16. He's talking about, if my head is exalted, you hunt me like a fierce lion. He's feeling like the Lord is actually coming after him. Sometimes some of us don't realize certain things happening that that lion wasn't, it wasn't the Lord. That lion was Satan. It was Satan who was roaming the earth. It is Satan who's roaming the earth. It's not God. And if God allows it, then that means God has a plan. And creation can't question the creator. You can plead with him. You can talk with him. You can even hold the hand of God from bringing forth wrath. But when it is all said and done, God has the final say. You just have to let God be God. You, you're not God. You just have to, you have to humble yourself to the point to allow God just to be God. Going on over to 11. Here's another guy, uh, Zophar, urges Job to repent. He just 
he just asked Job to repent. God was using his brother to repent. But then, like I said, some people come and be used by God and they go further than what they're supposed to be going. You hear people, preachers, as I have shared when I was talking about the marriage, uh, you have these preachers who are teaching. I respect them. Loved them. I would listen to some of them sometimes. When I got introduced to them, seen them, if it was even on YouTube, seen them, oh, wow, that was good. I can identify with them. I identify with them. I understand even sometimes where they're coming from. I understand where they're coming from. But dealing with that, you can go too far. You can go too far to the point where you got to realize that you, you got different levels of people hearing you and listening to you where if someone is already so far in darkness and all you can hear is you're going to hell that's all they hear in their ears is you're going to hell they're hearing that enough around the people they're hearing that around enough with society or their loved ones you know or even the group of people they they hung up with or if they're even in some type of cult say satanic cult they thinking hell's a good place so what else can we say besides that that someone is just going to hell? Yes, you have to expose it, but you have to bring it forth in a such a way that dealing with that, that it is God doing it, and then you pull back. But some people just come and they just beat people into hell. They beat people into hell. That's why I asked one time before, is uh, certain ones that was in the word of God. Are they going, you know, are they, are they in hell? So there's sometimes some people, they mean well, but they've been doing it for so long and nobody maybe rebuked them or corrected them or said something about it. And yet at the same sense, they just go on and go on. And guess what? Now the enemy has got a hold of their mouth and they don't even realize it. And I'm not talking about God himself. I'm talking about Satan. Satan says, say it again, they're going to hell. Say it again, they're going to hell. And they're being used as a slave for Satan. They're pushing more hell, pushing so much more darkness. Let's talk about some light then. This, this is a different season now. There's a season when there's times of war, times of hate, time to love, time to embrace and refrain from. There's seasons where you talk about hell and then there's seasons where you're going and you talk about going to pull people out of hell because a lot of people are just going with hell on earth. People are getting enough of hell on earth and they ain't being equipped. Some of these ministries is not going out there to, to, un, to release unclean spirits. A lot of these holy churches is not going out there to preach against those things uh, to bring forth those out of from oppression or depression. They're not even doing nothing to bring people off the streets. They might be feeding them, but there's they're doing what's been so familiar with them that, that there's something new need to be put on them. Where they might have to take the ties and their jackets and coats and vests off and get put some gloves on and go out there into the gutters of the streets. And not just the streets. In a home that's been tormented. Where there's so much darkness and chaos in. Where someone is bound even in their own home. Whether even it's let's say this vessel. In their own mind. Where you're actually going there to remove unclean spirits. Oh you can go baptize. You can baptize all day long. Are you removing spirits? Or are you saying you're not called? If you're not called, I respect that. That's why God has raised up. He raised up people to remove unclean spirits, to cast out devils. Everybody can't do everything because he only gets certain gifts or the Holy Spirit is only going to move through certain vessels as he see fit. Some who choose not to do certain things, then those that have the ability to do it, he would give them ability. And if they would flow with that ability, he'd give them more ability, more authority, more power to do so. He even give them much more of desire. If you, there's something out there, all they care about is building buildings and baptizing people. And that is fine. But then point them to the one where they might need to get that spirit cleaned out. Point them to the other one where they might need to get that oppression lifted up off of them. Because at that place, that holy place you might be at, Many of you, that holy place you might be at, 
you're, you're, you're too stuck. You're, you're, you can't find yourself holier than thou. You can't present yourself to a place that you're holier than thou. It's amazing every time. Distractions. You've been distracted so long with dealing with what you've been doing, dealing with that when God tries to send something new, you miss it. You're so intellectual, but you're stuck in your intellect. When the spirit comes and tries to speak, you miss on what the spirit, you you only focus on what your eyes have seen, which is in just the script of this thing. All you can do is see what you see and all you can produce, the only thing you can produce is what you see at times. But point them somewhere else. Point them to that brother. Point them to that sister. And let them help teach. They taught Paul and Silas and, and di different people. Many sisters taught. They don't mean they had to be a preacher, but they taught. So no different than your mother might have taught you the word. Oh, how many of us forget where we came from. And it's not taking anything away. All is is that you're having that compassion. Maybe you, you're getting that understanding. It's like I'm not going to get where I need to get, but I'm going to go on forward. Um, because like I said, I am going to have my <clears throat> last video uh, on this chapter. So it's going to have to be the next, next uh, within the next hour. But this place here sometimes is just, just so far. Chapter 11 was talking about for Job to repent. And some of us, we just have to repent. It's nothing wrong. It, it don't make no difference how you look. Just because you might think you have a great name, that maybe God trying to bring you out of that cloud nine that you might be on. Because you have done you have done some great things. You might have done great things, but you could not conquer small things. Some people have done some great things, but they could not conquer small things. And so because they've done great things, they look at people who's knocking down or doing, removing unclean spirits or doing small things as if that, they don't matter. But from my understanding is the foxes that spoil the, the whole vine. Foxes go in there and you have a whole lot of fruit on a vine and they take them. Eat it all before you eat it all. They eat it all from the smallest grape to the biggest grape. They're devoured around. I can take a bunch of small stuff and devour it. Many people out here are just uh, taking down little stuff to some people, doing stuff to some people don't want to do. Saying some stuff other people don't want to say. Them the little guys, they don't mean much. Look at my churches. Look at our cathedral. Look at the mega church that we build. They, 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 some of these mega preachers out here, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, will not. They too civilized now. They too civilized to a building. They're slave. They're the they're, they're slave master in the in the building now. They won't get their hands dirty. They can't come out of their million dollar, their millions of dollars homes. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you can't, can't come out of their million dollars homes and take one of those, take a $10 million home, bring it down to a five million, take five million to build more homes. To build other people in the churches. To bring people off the streets. There's so much I can say but I'm not. They get my drift. And us small minded people. As they might look at us small minded people. Y'all get my drift too. Repent. Zophar urges Job to repent. Then Zophar the Namanite answered and said, Should not the multitude of words be answered? And should a man full of talk be vindicated? Should your empty talk make men hold their peace? And when you mock, should no one rebuke you? You're going to hell. Should nobody rebuke you? Are you the only one that's not going to hell? Should somebody not rebuke you or correct you? 
We're not God use somebody to humble you. I don't have to say brother John is here to do that. I'm saying the God in me. If you get out of what people get out of what they see, even in your own uh, uh, your own circles that you're in, if you can get out of who that person is, what great things they have done, and see the God in them, there'll be a different perspective about some things. When you mock, should no one rebuke you? For you have said, my doctrine is pure. This is chapter 11. My doctrine is pure, but oh, that God will speak and open his lips against you. Are, are many of y'all doctrines pure out there? Just a question. Are you dotting every I, crossing every T? So why don't any of the body of Christ of their different denominations fellowship with one another? This is not just about church buildings. I'm talking about even dealing with belief because the main thing, when you got different cultures in de denominations of bodies of Christ, uh, churches, if you want to say, Okay, then when you take all of that and put it together, what do you have if you can become a powerful unit? You have a kingdom. But guess what? We can have kingdom here on earth. But every last one of those denominations, all you denominations out there divided. So are you part, whatever your doctrine is and whatever you preach, are you hindering the kingdom of God to manifest itself here on earth? Are you hindering the kingdom of God to manifest itself here on earth because you're divided of doctrine? Jesus said, I have a doctrine you know not of. If they would just let him heal, leave him alone, it would just add it to whatever they did. They, he wasn't bothering nobody. When he came and pointed finger and casting out devils, the finger of God has come and casted out devils. They had a problem with that. Why would the religious people have a problem with him healing people of something that they didn't do? They just, they chose to look good. They chose to uh, represent the children of Abraham. They chose to follow traditions and rituals. They, they, they chose to be self-righteous, but he didn't bother them. But oh, when they approached him, did he not deal with them? Did he not deal with them? You can see movies. That's not that can't even be a greater of expression of so much as expression of being actually being in the setting of that. Movies only get a certain display. Movies only give a certain display. But I can just imagine when he comes in the temple and flip over the tables and when he come in and how he might have spoke to them because there was ang there's an anger with someone who's who's taunting him. An anger when somebody was taunting him, asking him questions, why he do this, why he do that, when he can walk into a room of a setting and be able to tell what men are saying, know their thoughts, question them before they question him, give him an answer where they ain't got one word to say. Chapter 11, verse 5. But oh, that God would speak and open his lips against you, that he would show you the secrets of wisdom. Or they would double your prudence. Know therefore that God exacts from you less than your iniquity deserves. Some things that God bring forth, your, however he bring it, it's probably because you deserve it. Some things you might deserve, and even if you did not deserve it, some things that you did not deserve it, you probably still needed it because it's going to come a day that you're going to, the Holy Spirit will remind you of something, and you'll be like, oh, okay, now I got an understanding. You didn't think vegetables was good for you until you got sick. And then when you got sick, your body was lacking something. And now you understand why mama tell you you better eat those beans. Not your daddy. It'd be your mama telling you why you need to do this or why you need to do that. Then when you get older and you get sick, or you listen to the doctor, but guess what? What happened before then? You might have heard it from mama. You might have heard of somebody who was a low life, who you thought was no good. You might have heard it from a bum on the street, someone who was homeless. 
who was less fortunate, but yet you didn't think they was worthy for you to hear anything from. Sometimes we deserve certain things in our lives just for it to reveal itself later to show you. It says, can you, verse 7, can you search out the deep things of God? Can you find out the limits of the Almighty? They are higher than heaven. What can you do? Deeper than Sheol? I think I used to hear people when they talked that, they were talking about hell, maybe. I don't know. But for someone find out what Sheol is, I will later on, just for my own sake. But that's where I'm thinking, something deeper. It's got to be, whatever's deep, it must be somewhere in a, in a dark place. It must be in a dark place or as a deep place where it's, it's so hidden. Something is so hidden. What can you know? That measure is longer than the earth, the broader than the sea. If he passes by in prisons and gather to judgment, then who can hinder him? Who, who, can, who can stop the Lord from doing whatever not? This is, this is this guy trying to tell Job certain things because Job know these things. You need to repent from how you're feeling and some of the things that you're saying. Number 11, for he, know, he knows deceitful men. He sees wickedness also. Will he not then consider it? Verse 12, for an empty-headed empty man would be wise. For an empty-headed man to be wise. You can walk around here foolish, empty-headed, just doing anything. And all of a sudden, something come to you. I don't care how busy you are. Some of you can, you can be welling and crying about so much stuff. Sisters, you can be crying about so much stuff. And then all of a sudden, just a word from God. And all your emptiness, boom. Here comes God. You didn't even have to ask for it. You didn't have to seek, seek for it. All of a sudden... And that, that caused you was just empty. You had nothing else, no thought, no, can't figure out a solution to a problem. And that's sometimes part of our problem. Sometimes we, we know the problem, but sometimes dealing with the body of Christ, we, we're not seeking the solution. We're not seeking the solution. And everything that's going on around us, what is the solution? We know what the problem is. But then when someone brings a solution, you're like, nah, that's not. But have you ever tried it? We drunk old wine plenty of time. Even the Lord even told those who choose to drink wine, the old wine, drink of the old covenant, go ahead and do so. Keep all the commandments, every T the word of it, you better keep. But dealing with that, but the thing is, when it comes to new wine, have you tasted the new wine? What's wrong with the new wine? What is wrong with the new vessels? What is wrong with us? What is wrong with us for so long has accepted you all who you are? Your religiosity, your ide ideology, your 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 stuck place. We have we what's called we we tired of being stuck. We want to be free. I'm free because when I follow a shepherd, he's supposed to be leading me by the still waters, along green pastures. So I had to get from I stopped following shepherds and and sought the true shepherd because I didn't want to stay in that stuck place. I want to flow with the rivers. I want my roots to grow. And if they can't, if they're growing in the building or in some type of religious where it hits a certain ground that is not softening, it's not moist. Sometimes your roots go in these religious organizations, you get scorched. You get scorched. But those who have been scorched, look for an open door. Seek the true shepherd. I shared this a while back. Start a revolution. A few years ago, start a revolution. Matter of fact, that came out of the man's doctrine, the equal bondage video. That God's word is freedom. It came out of that where the Lord, where I just came from prayer and my wife asked me, did I want to say anything? Because she was doing a video. Just came from prayer, walking with the Lord, praying. I told him start a revolution. Don't, don't come against the church. Just matter of fact, give birth. Give birth while you're in the church. If God has to use you, sister, a brother, to give birth in the church, give birth 
in the church. Maybe it needs to be revived. That means to bring forth life again. Because many of the church and on every corner that they are in here, here in America is in a stuck place. They're having miscarriages. But I'm going to move on. Chapter 12, it talks about Job answers his critics. Then Job answered and said, No doubt you are the people, and wisdom will die with you. But I have understanding this as well as you. I am not inferior to you. Indeed, who does not know such things as these? Job just came back to say, I know these things. But if he knows certain things, why ain't he acting on these things? Sometimes dealing with it, you have people who come and present this wisdom to you and, and their understanding. I'm like, I know that. But see, even dealing with Job, it's like God can still use people who carry that because you, you gave it to people. And they're bringing it back to you. And yet, in the same sense, he, he, he's looking at it as somebody coming against him, but they're not really coming against him. They're just giving back what he got. So, but yet, he still haven't come out of that sunken place. Some people say, I know. You tell somebody something, they go to, they, they tell everybody everything, got the answer for everybody. Then when it comes to them, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. But then when somebody's telling them something that they have told them, Oh, you think I'm stupid? I already know that. Yeah, I'm only giving you what you gave me. I'm only giving you what you gave me. I'm not in fear of you. You think you're better than me. All of a sudden, they talk in a different language. When they was in a place that they never talked like that before. They was in a place they never talked about like that before. And yet, all somebody was just telling them, hey, come back to yourself. Come back to yourself. Here's, a, here's the sermon. I put this over this. This is chapter, chapter 12, verse 4. I am one mocked by my friends who called on God, and he answered him. The just and blameless who is ridiculed. A lamp is despising the thought of one who's at ease. It is made ready for those who feet slip. The tents of robbers and prosper. The tents of robbers prosper. And those who provoke God are secure in what God provides by his hands. He comes into this discernment part to say, I am one mocked by my friends. So he can tell that they was getting to a point. You could be in your most anguished situation. And then you can say, you know what? I can sense they were sincere, but they're not sincere no more. I, I'm discerning this. That I am one mocked by my friends who, who, who called on God and he answered him. I, I, I'm the type of person I know I called on God and he answered me but yet I can tell when somebody's now getting to a place they're mocking me there's so much stuff that's going on Don't many of you all out here don't think you are the only one there's people who's heard certain things been beat up been scandalized and, 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 and mistreated abused and mistreated by mere words and they kind of like, you know, I already know certain things. Maybe sometimes there are some people who go through things and they, they know. Just give them time to process some stuff. Sister, brother, sometimes when you go through some stuff, just allow yourself to process it. Don't go, go tell everybody about it because as soon as you tell everybody about it, they're looking for the first opportunity. Some of them, especially family members, they're looking for the first opportunity. That's body of Christ or not your family. So sometimes just keep certain things to yourself, process it through because you already know. This is something I taught and I'm going to move on. I talked to my daughters when they was growing up because you get to a place where you can't teach your daughters and life will teach them. And this is still chapter 12. I would say read chapter 12. Uh, under six, under verse 6 on chapter 12, starting in verse 7. I put the head in, I put the head in my Bible. Life will teach you. Life will teach you a lot of things that men and women don't have to teach you. 
Sometimes just you being here in life, life itself got everything in place that will teach you. It don't make no difference whether they're beasts, whether they're Satan, whether there's angels or fallen angels, whether or they're people of honor or dishonor, weak or strong. Life will teach you that everything is established. The critters, the bugs, everything around, something will teach you. And I taught my, my kids this, my daughters and them this, that life will teach you. If you can't listen to me because you might think I was oldie foldy at the time, now they're finding out life. It's teaching them. So sometimes you got to look at life. If you can just humble yourself, life will teach you. You just got to be able to receive it, process it, move on. Verse 7, but now ask the beast and they will teach you. But now ask the beast and they will teach you. Now you can read all of chapter 12 though, but, but now ask the beast and it will teach you. And the birds of the air and they will tell you. Or speak to the earth and it will teach you. And the fish of the sea will explain to you. Now here's something to teach you. And this is somebody who's going to explain to you. Number nine, who among all these does not know that the hand of God or the Lord has done this? And whose hands is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? Does not the ear test words? Does not the ear test words and the mouth taste its food? And the length of days understanding? Does not the ear test words and the mouth taste its foods? Wisdom is with aged men. Wisdom is with aged men. And this is this is Job talking. Wisdom is with aged men and with length of days understanding. But yet, Job saying that somewhere down the line in the chapters is going to talk about people of old age. They don't have all the wisdom. It don't make no difference how long you've been here. How are you going to figure God out? So wisdom is good. Let's say this. She is good. He Wisdom is good. But just because you at a certain age don't mean nothing. I talked about that in that same video. I'm talking about man's doctrine equals bondage. God's word equals freedom. Young people don't sit there and just, you can listen. Listen. If somebody's teaching you something. I advise you to make sure they explain to you. And if you can't find out what they're teaching, they can't explain it to you. They're just teaching it because it's religious. Then find someone else. If you have to find a fish, let him explain it to you. If someone wants to shove some type of food down your mouth, guess what? If it don't taste good, like the Lord said, if anything's look warm, he spits it out. You're not just going to shove anything down his mouth. What he did, what he called for it to be, that's what he wanted to be, hot or either it's going to be cold. But if it's lukewarm, he don't like it, he's going to spit it out of his mouth. He's going to taste and see. I know with this word, if I taste and see, it is good. Sometimes it can be bitter, but God has a way, as I said before, it would come bitter sweet. It would come out good. No different when John, when he, in book of Revelation, ate the word of God, he took the scroll. And it had to be bitter, but how sweet it is. Because now that very thing that was bitter, like castor oil, it has a nasty taste. But if there's something on the inside of you that's causing some type of sick or illness or that needs to weather, it has a way of going in and removing that problem. Make his whatever, whatever the situation is, leave. I'm just using that as an example. Castor oil, or it will flush. Whatever is in you, it will flush it out. But does not the ear test words? I test words that comes my way. I shared in a video, I can't remember which one it was. You know, sometimes people comes at you with words. And old saying was, stick and stones. May break my bones, but words won't hurt me. Some of you allow words to take you to a sunken place. Words don't bother me. I don't get offended over words. I don't get offended. Choose whatever. Now, if something comes, then now I'm going to test that word because it had, a, it had a, it didn't have the right type of taste. So why would I get offended over something that I ain't really willing to digest? Why would I? Why would I digest something that? doesn't taste good not unless it's coming from the Lord 
But coming from man, man can give you poison. Man can try to kill you. Man can give you something that have you walk around here like you a zombie. Like you some type of cookie cutter. Man can give you something. As I said, sometimes when I was out there, they can give you something. You be hooked on it. They can give you something. It's just like drugs. They can give you something. You hooked on it. You're addicted to it. You under the influence. ABC store. Man can give you ABC store and have you up under the influence. And y'all will go to the ABC stores. And then once you get hold of it, it can make you so sick. Lord, if you deliver me out of this, I never do it again. Does not the ear test the words and the mouth taste its foods? Many of you, what are you tasting? What are you drinking? I'm done. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to move quick on the next one. So when I come in, I'm going to come in and uh, finish this. Go check on my wife and stuff. Uh, we will start, I'm going to like start at 16th, do a little uh, narrative or something over 16, chapter 16. Probably hit 20 a little bit. Move forward quickly, get to uh, Elihu. All right, I'll return soon. Um, sorry, I told you all I'm a little long-winded, I'm pretty sure, but... It, this is to help you. This is to help you. It'll give you some time. If some of you don't choose to go to churches, if you just want to, and y'all sit there and listen to a lot of things just on YouTube, this gives you time to just to be able to hear someone who cares, who's sent for souls, who love you. Somebody might say, I, you don't know me from Adam and Eve. I don't, I don't have to know you, but the God in me is the one that's reaching out for you. And he's placed it in my heart. He's put that burden and pressure upon my heart. And my concern, one part of two of the things of my weakness, one of the things I think I've shared with people, one is souls. And the other one could be death. So in order to gain souls, I have to help people through the hell they're going through. To, in order to bring people from death, the deaf spirit, the deaf angel, I'm trying to bring life. I'm trying to allow God to say, hey, take your building, take your voice, carry me wherever I, you need to be carried. Use whatever device you need to use that the world of man has created. That we may be able to save life. And then once we save it, we're able to give life and life more abundantly. All right, I'll be back shortly. See you soon.